Hey guys, welcome to Tuesday's Q&A session where I answer all of your questions about service dogs. It happens every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. E Eastern Standard Time. And I'm your host, Caitlin Bird, and I am so excited for you guys to be here. I am the owner of Caitlin's Animal Training, as well as the lead trainer for the program, The Unstoppable Service Dog. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody here. I'm so glad to be able to be here with you guys tonight. So um, I wanted to first let you guys know that I actually have three openings in my calendar this week that if you are sure, it's, that's a little, let me adjust the light, it's a little bit, it's a little bit intense right now. Wait, this way? Oh, yeah, that way, okay. It doesn't have that ring and you, I, I don't know about you guys, but I hate looking at videos when there's like rings in someone's glasses and it's just really annoying. It distracts the heck out of me. So anyways, I wanted to tell you guys about the uh, three openings I have in my calendar this week for if you are sure that a service dog is going to help you, but you're not sure how you're going to make it happen. Maybe you have some questions about maybe you have a current dog that you think might be a good service dog candidate, but you're not quite sure. Maybe he has, he has some behaviors that you might want to be working on. So I have three slots open for 30 minute phone consults. Again, they are free. And normally my phone consults are $87.50 per hour. So if you are interested in booking that, go ahead, comment down below with the spoon and I will reach out private privately to you in your DMs, okay? So again, welcome so much. I'm so glad you got here. Let's jump into the question. So the first one I have is by uh, Yaya. Yaya says, I will be having a German Shepherd female coming home by summer when she is at least 10 weeks old. What are your basic tips for training for younger pups? So... <sighs> basic tips for training patience uh keep the training sessions very short because oftentimes people like like there, there's typically a rule out there in the training world where you want to have at least you know 10 minute training sessions twice a day or 15 minute training sessions twice a day where that's not the case with puppies you might be only be able to do one or two repetitions such as like calling their name and giving them a treat before the puppy is done, right? Like that's it, that's all we need to do for puppies. And that's okay because you have to go at the animal's pace, right? So now the thing I want you to keep in mind specifically, Yaya, for German Shepherds is that they are very, very pattern driven. They pick up patterns like that. And you have to keep in mind, if you haven't had a German Shepherd before, this is where problems can develop, such as separation anxiety, because they understand when you're about to leave. And I would prepare yourself now how to prevent separation anxiety in dogs, because this all takes place early on. And um, also keep in mind to vary your training. German Shepherds, they are very driven by patterns, right? So if you do the same sequence of sit down, stand, your dog's going to be predicting what you're doing and get bored with their training and might not want to participate. Or they might start the next behavior and offer it before you even give the cue. And a lot of people will give a dog a treat for that. And the goal is to have your dog do it on cue, not predict and start doing it by, by themselves, right? So specifically for your dog breed and your dog's age, that is my best advice. Um, and of course, if you have any like particular questions or if you're looking for resources, you know, reach out to me. I do have that free 30 minute phone call available. Again, I have three slots open this week um, and that is worth $87.50. So if you're looking to get a free consult to because you're like on the edge, like you're on the edge of wanting to have a dog or maybe you already have a dog and you have some questions about their training, just let me know. And I'll be happy to and comment with a spoon emoji. I'll be happy to reach out to you and schedule that free consult. So the next question I have is by Cassandra. She says, I have a cane Corso and American bull mix, and he is five months going on six months. I'm having a hard time training him. Is there a different way I should be doing it? I have had dogs that was so much easier. 
Hi, Millie. Nice to see you here. I'm glad to see you. I hope your pups are doing good. So, Cassandra, that's an interesting question. I, I have a few questions for you, right? Number one, how have you been training? Number two, is your dog neutered or spayed? Did you say male? Cane Course American Bull Terrier Mix. Hard time training him. Okay, yeah, so he, it is a boy. Um, a lot of the times, um, once the dog starts maturing, or and even after, like once they've really hit sexual maturity, their attention span can wander and it can be more difficult for a new or beginner novice dog trainer to keep the focus of that dog. Okay, so you have to keep those kinds of things in mind. Now, him being uh, going on six months of age, guess what? You are right in teenager phase for dogs. And this is when they start getting a mind of their own and they're saying, well, if it's not interesting, I'm not going to participate, right? And it's our job as owners and as trainers to make the training process enjoyable so that the dogs are on their best behavior, they're focused, they're attentive, because if a dog doesn't want to participate, they don't care, right? You're, then, then you're making them be there because they have to be there. And for service dogs, that's not when a dog is on their game. Dogs are on their game when they want to be there and want to be participating with you. Hi, nice to see you. So yeah, I think I would need to, I think you should probably book a phone call with me so I can get some more history on you. Um, and you know, if you're having a problem with training, I, I just, just last week I got in someone from Instagram. She has this beautiful um, English Mastiff. And I think, I think she's just about a year or somewhere between one and two years of age. And she's really had this issue of focus and attention where if there's a dog that goes by, zoom. If there's a person that goes by, zoom, totally off attention of her. And we've only had one session so far out of our three and she's doing fantastic. Her handle is actually Angel of Valhalla, I think, because her, no, or is it Valkyrie? I think her dog's name is Valkyrie and it says, her handle is Angel of Valhalla or something like that. But it's a gorgeous English Mastiff. You should go check them out how they're doing. They've updated their posts and they're doing fabulous. Now when anybody comes by, especially her mom, apparently her mom is like the biggest distraction for this dog. So they've been practicing and keeping, you know, the six foot rule. Anytime her mom goes by, because uh, she visits, you know, here and there now Valkyrie automatically looks at her handler. And again, it only took one session, right? And the session was only like 30 minutes long because when you work with a trainer and out of an hour, like I gave her an hour for the session, but it was, I mean, we were done in 30 minutes. So, uh, I mean, when you work with a trainer that knows what they're doing and knows your dogs, you can make a lot of progress very, very quickly. Okay, and I am so proud of her and I can't wait to see what the next two sessions bring. Uh, all right, so I did want to tell you guys again um, about the consultations. They are worth $87.50. So if you would like to book your own, I have three slots open in my calendar this week. Uh, and you can go ahead and comment below with the spoon emoji. I also wanted to tell you guys about my blog. If you guys are not already familiar, I do have a blog that I post to after... I do my late night chat series. So late night chat is where I get to know you guys and you get to know me and we get to go over things on the internet together um, and just chat and talk. So I encourage people actually, you know, if you're able to, you know, grab a beer, grab a wine, grab a mixed drink, whatever it is that you're interested in. And just let's come come in and chat. So that is on my personal Facebook page. You do have to either be a friend or following me in order to see those updates for late night chat. Now, if you are interested in going, it happens every Sunday night starting at 8 p.m. And um, yeah, we just had a great one the other day. And I usually post a clip from there and post it to my blog. And you can find that on my website at caitlinsanimals.com. So I say, I say pretty busy online. <laughs> There's always something that I'm doing. All right. So the next question I have 
is I suffer from paralyzing PTSD. I can't leave my house without my dog. He keeps me grounded and helps me find exits to buildings if I have an anxiety attack. He is well trained. Does he qualify as a service animal or a comfort dog? So I think what you mean, um, and this is from Ron. Ron, if you're saying comfort dog, I think you mean emotional support animal, right? So if it's an emotional support animal, well, one, you're going to need to have a doctor's letter of recommendation or, you know, like a prescribing physician or a counselor or like a psychologist or psychiatrist to prescribe you this animal. OK, now, if funny enough, you don't need one of those if you have a service dog. OK, now, if you're looking to fly with your psychiatric service dog, you are probably going to need one because the DOT guidelines have changed as as of like uh, January 22nd, I believe, 18th or 22nd, one of those days, <laughs> a little bit later in the month. And um, if he helps you find these things, my question to you would be, did you train him to find exits? If the answer is yes. And that's one of his tasks. You know, generally service dogs need at least three tasks. And I would ask, does he have more tasks, right? Um, and is that something that helps you live your daily life? So generally service dogs have three tasks, at least bare minimum. Um, a lot of them have quite many more. And there's actually, if you have too many tasks that need to be trained, there's a lot of organizations that won't even take you in as a client. And that's one of the reasons why organizations would turn you down because you have just way too many things that they would need to train for. Okay. Hey, Ingrid, nice to see you in here. Did you find uh, a local place to walk your pup? I would definitely like to know. And we need to set up a new time to meet up so we can record. Obviously, we, we stay within 50 feet. I think it's 50 feet. We've, we've been extra careful. <laughs> We're, we've like quadrupled the distance. Um, anyways, uh, do, 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 do. Okay. So yeah, um, I, 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 I need a little bit more information, Ron, in order to answer your question, but I hope I gave you enough information to, you know, help you along to answer that question. And the last question I have here is, what should we be looking for in a trainer? And I would love to answer that question, right? Number one, you should have a good relationship with your trainer. If you do not like the personality of your trainer, if you don't like the way the trainer is explaining something to you, if you're having a hard time understanding your trainer, then you should probably look at getting a different trainer. Okay, you guys need to be on the same level, you need to be driving, you need to be able to have that open communication with yourself, right? Uh, Ingrid says, I did, we went down, we went, we went to town and stayed far back in a parking lot, but near the road. Okay, cool. Definitely update me on how that's going. So Ingrid just got her new Great Day and Service Dog Prospect. And she's doing just some general environment socializing because she, she's got him at nine weeks old, which is super, super young for a Great Dane. And he's still like got a lot of baby stuff going on. So he just kind of needs some basic exposure to the environment and just to chill and relax and do some R&R. &R. So she's been working really hard on that for the past couple of days because you picked him up on Sat, no, Friday. You picked him up on Friday. That's right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so, oh, that, we're back to the question. What should we be looking for in a trainer? Yeah, you need to be driving. Um, and ideally, you want a trainer that, you know, doesn't just get results, right? Because every trainer says they get results. But do they get results humanely? Do they get results with your dog being engaged? Do they understand dog body language to the extent that they are actually empathetic? towards that dog. So if the dog's feeling sad, do they feel sad with that dog and try to prevent that fear in the future? A lot of dog trainers out there, they say, oh, I know body language and I can tell you that that dog's not happy right now, but I don't care, right? What kind of a dog trainer is that? Um, I would be very, very careful about the kind of dog trainer that you choose to work with, okay? And again, you have to be driving with them. 
All right, guys. So as a reminder, I do do these live Q&A sessions every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you are interested in having your question answered at the next one, I will be, you can either post in the questions down below and I will also be posting another thread in the group at service dog prep. So I'll be posting a thread. Hey, what guys, do you, what kind of questions do you guys have for this upcoming Q and A? You can just post it down below and I'll be answering them like I'm doing here today. Hi, Carol. Nice to see you here. I hope you're doing all right. Let me know where you're at right now. Cause I haven't heard from you in a couple of days. So I kind of, I've kind of been wondering where you've been. All right. So, uh, remember if you guys are interested in getting a free 30 minute consult, I do have three openings in my calendar this week. And if you are interested, post down below with a spoon emoji, I will reach out to you to schedule your free 30 minute consult. Again, that is worth $87 and 50 cents. So I'm giving away free money here. All right. If you're on the edge of thinking if you need a service dog, but you're not really, you have some remaining questions, I'm here to help you with that discovery call, okay? So thank you guys so much. That was a pretty quick, what time is it? It's 8.18, that was a 20 minute Q&A session. Do you guys have anything else? Any other questions? I'm gonna open it up for a couple minutes. And if that's it, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Any remaining questions? All right, then remember to read the blog that can be seen on my website at caitlinsanimals.com forward slash, I think it's a dog blog, or it could just be blog. <laughs> there's a search thing in the corner of the website that you can search and find it if, if there's an issue. Okay, thank you guys so much. Have a great night and I will see you next Tuesday for the next Q&A session. Bye guys.